torque wrench while tapping or pushing up to allow the pin to fit completely through the hole. Especially if they have rounded ends, you may have to pick some pins several times for them to properly set. This backwards rotation of the plug will provide valuable feedback, though it may upset some pins you have previously set. Don't worry, you will be able to go back and pick those normal pins again later. A second popular design for high security pins is the spool pin. They are also aptly named because their shape resembles a spool. They produce a very deceiving false set and can be difficult to detect until too late. The side of the pin is designed to catch on the edge of the hole, making it very difficult to push up while applying too much torque. Again, try to reduce your torque and jiggle up on the deceiving pin. An important difference between opening a lock with a key and picking it is that torque must be applied to the plug while picking. A special pin design called a serrated pin exploits this fact to make picking incredibly difficult. The sides of the pin and hole have teeth and edges that catch on each other when torque is applied to the plug. This holds them in place and prevents you from pushing them upwards. Vibrational or impact methods may work better for these locks. Generally, only a few of the top pins will be replaced with these special high security pins, though the serrated design may be used in all of the pin columns. If pushing up on a pin causes the plug to rotate backwards slightly, then you are most likely dealing with a security pin. A light torque with a heavier picking force can be used, or you can switch to a high speed raking, impact or vibrational method. Security tumblers were once the exclusive domain of expensive, high security cylinders. As time goes by, they are becoming more and more common. You are probably quite likely to experience them in your travels, but not on the common door lock yet. Chapter 4 Wafer Locks how they work and how to pick them. The wafer lock is very common in many low-cost applications since they are much cheaper to manufacture. They can be found everywhere, including desks, filing cabinets, doors, windows, security boxes, etc. They are very similar to pin tumblers, except they use wafers instead of pins. The easiest way to identify one is by noticing the flat wafer in the keyway in place of a round pin. Picking them is almost identical and usually much easier. The internal workings of a wafer lock, however, are quite different. Wafer locks work by utilizing wafers that rise or lower inside the plug. If they move too high or too low, they will protrude out of the plug, locking it in place and preventing it from rotating. The wafers are cut differently, so they have to be moved to a different height so that they protrude. With the correct key, the wafers will move to the correct height and nothing will protrude from the plug. It will be free to rotate. In an attempt to increase their security, manufacturers have developed the double-sided wafer lock. The wafers have alternating springs, so some will have to be pushed up while others need to be pushed down. Their keys are quite distinguishable because they have notches on both sides and may be inserted in either direction. Here is where your set of double-sided picks will come in handy. You can push up on the top of the lock and then push down on the bottom of the lock without having to take out your pick and turn it over. If you already have learned about single-sided wafer locks, then double-sided ones are a straightforward extension of what you already know. This special dual-pronged torque wrench, pictured here, is common in many kits and works great for double-sided locks.
since you can insert your pick in the middle and easily access both the top and bottom of the wafers. When picking wafer locks, you can use most of the same techniques as with pin tumblers, with the exception of impact and vibration techniques. Due to their nature, some special tools were developed specifically for these locks. One such tool is the tryout key. A locksmith might have a large collection of such keys, which more or less resemble actual keys. They vary in size and shape in the hope that if one doesn't work, the next one might. If lock tolerances are poor, tryout key makers can cut a notch between two depths, and it should work for both. In fact, before 1968, a set of only around 64 tryout keys could open any GM automotive lock. They're simple to use. Insert the key, jiggle it around slightly, and work it in and out while trying to turn the lock. If it doesn't work, move on to the next key. With just the right touch, with cheaper locks, and with luck, you can be very successful with this method. With experience, you will find wafer locks are usually easier to pick than their pin tumbler equivalents. What will help you most though is practice. In time you will be able to pick or bypass most common locks that are encountered in everyday life. We hope you enjoyed this educational video. Remember to keep practicing to build your skills. Lock picking is an art that you can develop over time. Also be sure to follow all applicable laws for your area regarding the possession and use of lock picks and lock picking tools. One of the best ways to learn this art is to apprentice with an experienced locksmith. You will learn there is a lot more to being a locksmith than just picking locks. Again we hope you enjoyed this video and keep practicing.